We continue to read the story of Peter's adventures today and let's let these miracles, these incredible things that Peter is doing, let them be challenges to us, not just things that is fun to read about and then we kind of forget about them. The first one is he prays for a guy who's been paralytic for eight years and that is a, you know, a kind of a big deal. And then the next one is even worse, which is he's praying for this lady who's actually dead. She's not just been a paralytic, she is dead. And both of the times that he prays, God seems to work well. He does work in power and they, they both are restored. It's incredible. When was the last time we prayed for something that seemed to be impossible? When was the last time we actually expected God to answer those prayers? If you're anything like me, you say these kind of prayers and they sort of, there's, there's not a lot of expectation in them, is there really? And they kind of dribble over your chin and just sort of like hang there. And it's, 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 there's no faith, there's no expectation. And what can be a helpful practice is to read this stuff and to remember, hey, the God that, that raised Tabitha through Peter, who was he, just who he happened to use, the God that, that healed this paralytic man is the God that I'm talking to right now, this morning or this evening or whenever you're watching this. The God who... Um, does these miracles is the same God who wants to do miracles today. Expect him to want to do that and ask him and seek him and knock on the door of heaven and see what happens. When we pray, let's choose, if possible, to pray with some level of expectation. Let this word, let the word of God set the bar for what we expect to see happen in our own lives. That's how following Jesus goes from being this kind of this, this, this monotonous routine that we allow it to become into something that really is the adventure that it's meant to be. And then this next little bit, we're going to see this is a significant thing that happened in the early church, which is initially some of the early uh, believers, even even people like Peter, thought that God really was coming for the Jewish people. They hadn't quite got their heads around yet that Jesus was coming to save the whole world, including the Jews and the non-Jews who are the Gentiles. They hadn't quite twigged that yet. And God is finding ways to let them know. And this is what's going on with Cornelius. Cornelius is a Gentile. He's not a Jew. And uh, the Holy Spirit tomorrow is going to fall on Cornelius and his family when Peter, arrive at, Peter arrives at their house. But first the Lord has to teach Peter a lesson, which is do not call anything unclean which I have called clean. And um, for us today, it's worth remembering that we are not called to be uh, the people who decide who deserves grace and who doesn't deserve grace. We are to be the distributors of grace, but we're not the arbiters, arbiters of it. We're not the ones that say, oh, you can have grace and you can't have grace. We are just to distribute grace to everybody. Jesus very clearly has come to save the whole world. Everybody is, is, is invited into his grace. And it's particularly worth remembering the people who are invited into his grace in your life include those who you especially think don't deserve it. Remembering that, um, for me, is a challenge and it's an impetus. I'm to give grace to everybody because that's what he offers to everybody.